Hello everyone and welcome back to the Helgi Karina and today we are going to discuss about a probabilistic data structure called count min sketch. Now in one of our previous videos we talked about another probabilistic data structure called bloom filter so if you haven't watched that video as yet please do watch it now. So let's let's look at what what is count min sketch. So according to the definition of count min sketch it is a probabilistic and space efficient data structure that serves as a frequency table of events in a stream of data. Now let's try to understand each of these words. Probabilistic over here means that the answers that this data structure gives are approximation of what the actual answer is ought to be. Uh, what space efficient means over here is that the space that is occupied uh, by the data in this uh, in this data structure is basically you know sublinear that is uh, you know it, it won't depend upon the amount of data that we are getting into it the, the, the space is kind of you know predetermined by some values which we are going to you know see in some in a while uh, and the third thing over here is that data structure that serves as a frequency table now what is a frequency table a uh, frequency table is basically a data structure is any data structure which kind of serves to solve problems like let's say we have been given a list of items and out of those list of items we need to tell what is how many times a particular item x occurred in that list so let's let's look into it like what how, how does a frequency table looks like in general so in general let's say you know we are getting a stream of data uh, like let's say you know we got alpha beta then let's say you know we got again alpha uh, charlie delta and let's say so on and so forth right so so as in when when we are getting this uh, let these you know uh, items what we are going to do is that we are going to maintain a hash map out of it now how does the hash map looks like is basically it's a key value pair so uh, first we get let's say alpha so what we are going to do is that we are going to store uh, so these are keys and these are kind of values let's say so so as we got alpha uh, we stored one in place of alpha so that means that till now alpha has occurred once next what we get is basically beta so what we are going to do is that we are going to store beta over here and we are going to put one over here now again what we got is alpha now what we are going to do is that we are going to overwrite the previous value of alpha with 2 because it had it already occurred one now we got one more instance of alpha right then let's say next we got charlie uh, charlie we stored one then you know we got delta and then we stored one let's say after this we got alpha again so we are going to remove the previous value and store 3 over here so let's say now after uh, you know after getting all these stream of values somebody asks us how many times alpha has occurred or what's the frequency of alpha right so for, after looking into this you know table what we can say is that you know alpha has occurred two times or let's say if it would if it would have occurred more times and we would have overridden more values of alpha we could say uh, we can just look up into this uh, table and just tell that you know these many times alpha or beta or charlie had occurred so this is how a frequency table kind of works if we are implementing it using a hash map so if we look at it, uh, the, what's the time complexity or space complexity of it? So, uh, you know, the time complexity over here would be, you know, uh, for each of the lookup over here, what we are doing is that we are just uh, uh, use, using the hash map. We are just looking into the value of that key and which is basically an O of one operation. That is, it's, it, it takes a constant amount of time. Uh, but if we look at the space complexity of this entire data structure, it is basically dependent upon the number of items that we are getting. That is number of distinct items we are getting. So, so it will be of order n if n is the, you know, distinct num uh, number of items that we have in our, uh, you know, input stream. So it is dependent upon the number of items. So let's look into it how uh, count means sketch data structure can solve can reduce our space complexity so basically count means sketch consists of two major components uh, the first one being a table of size d cross w where d denotes the number of rows w denotes the number of columns and we are going to use the same nomenclature throughout this video that is uh, d will remain uh, the number of rows and w will remain the number of columns 
so one uh, one component is basically a table of size d cross w uh, which is completely initialized till all the zeros that is all the cells are filled with a value of zero the second component of count min sketch is ba are basically d number of uh, hash functions ba basically you know if you see over here uh, you know each hash function has a dedicated row for it right so there are uh, w number of columns and there are d number of hash functions and you see each of the function has its own dedicated row in the this uh, you know table so this entire thing data structure over here represents a count min sketch now let's try to understand what are the two possible operations over count min sketch so uh, the first operation is basically an insert operation so whenever uh, how how it function is basically whenever an element needs to be added to uh to our data structure what we do is that first we pass it through all the hash functions that are you know present over here then what we will do is that each of these hash functions is capable of returning a number from 0 to uh, you know w minus 1 that is you know whatever is the width of the of this uh, hash table or of this you know count min sketch uh, table uh, so whenever we pass the pass the val a particular item through any of these hash functions it will return me a particular value between 0 and w minus 1 so what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to pass the item through all these hash functions and for each of the values returned by these hash functions uh, in the in their respective rows we are going to increment that index by 1 so let's say you know we pass an element uh, alpha uh, through all these hash functions let's say you know h1 returns back 2 uh, you know h2 returns back 4 h3 returns back 9 and let's say h4 returns back 1 so what we are going to do is that at the second index that is over here we are going to uh, you know increment this value by 1 that is from 0 it will become 1 Similarly, in H2 case, uh, you know, the fourth index will be replaced by, you know, it will be incremented by 1. H3, we are going to increment over here at the ninth position and H4, we are going to increment the first position. So, this is how any increment operation will happen. Any And now, whenever other element comes, we are again going to pass through, you know, all these hash functions and whatever indexes that are returned between 0 and W minus 1, we are going to increment those indices right uh, so this is how the insert operation would work now the second operation that is possible over uh, count min sketch data structures basically a check frequency operation now how it functions is that again let's say you know we uh, we will pass the whatever element that we need to check the frequency for uh, we are going to pass it through all these hash functions and again you know whenever we pass it it will return us back uh, each of these hash functions going to return us back one index between 0 and w minus 1 right so each of these indexes or each of these cells will represent one particular value over here right so let's say again we pass alpha so uh, for alpha again when we pass it through h1 we are going to get 2 so we'll uh, we will check the value at 2 right now it's 1 right so let's note 1 over here then again we pass uh, uh, you know uh, alpha through h2 we get back uh, fourth index and we see the value so right now and similarly for s3 and h4 uh, we are going to you know uh, find these values so uh, so let's say you know instead of one one for all of them let's say the values returned by them was x1 x2 x3 x4 right so let these be the values so what we are going to do is that we are going to find the minimum of all these values right so what operator we are applying over here is that we are applying a minimum operator over here so we are going to find the minimum of that and this will represent the frequency of uh, of that element in our count min stretch data structure that is how many times that element has occurred in the stream of items so let's try to you know evaluate this uh, via an example so let's say you know we are getting a again a list of elements uh, let's say whatever elements we get are alpha beta charlie and delta uh, let's say you know our uh, our count min sketch is of size uh, d cross w over here we have taken d as 2 and w as uh, you know 5 so uh, if you see like d represents the number of hash functions also so we have just two hash functions over here that is h1 and h2 
and W represents the number of columns. So we have five columns starting from zero to uh, four. So let's say the first and basically this table represents when we pass let's say an item alpha h1 would return 0 and h2 would return 2 and similarly for beta charlie and delta. So let's say the first uh, and, and of course we are going to you know fill uh, this uh, table initially with all the zeros because initially uh, you know all the frequencies are 0. So uh, let's say the first item that we get in the stream is alpha. So one, once we get alpha you know h1 is supposed to return 0 h2 is supposed to return 2. So at at the 0th index on h1's uh, row uh, you know we are going to increment it by 1. Similarly uh, second position in h2's row we are going to increment it by 1. Let's say the next element that we get into the stream is basically beta. So beta is uh, uh, when passed through h1 it gives 2 and when passed through h2 it gives 3. So uh, in the respective uh, rows that is uh, 2 over here we are going to increment it by 1 and uh, 3 over here we are going to increment it by 1. Now let's say the next element that we get over here is echo and uh, echo maybe let's say it returns 4 for h1 and it returns 3 for uh, h2. So uh, if we are getting echo so you know over here we are going to put 1 and at over here we are going to increment from 1 to 2 right now so these were all insert queries now let's say we get a query for asking for a you know uh, for finding the frequency which is check frequency uh, query and uh, what we are asked to uh, do is basically find the frequency of alpha so for finding the frequency of alpha what we are going to do is find the minimum of whatever h1x returns and whatever h2x returns that is at 0th index in the first row uh, what we get is 1 and at the second index in h2 row what we get is 1 and minimum of 1 comma 1 is 1 so what we get is uh, you know 1 is the frequency of alpha and which is correct uh, now let's say uh, we get another uh, request which is asking for uh, frequency of beta so look, let's look at this example. So H1 row we will check at the second index which is 1 and H2 row we are going to check at the third index which is 2 and minimum of 1 and 2 is 1 which is uh, so so the final uh, final answer is that frequency of beta in the current uh, data structure is 1 which is correct because you know uh, uh, beta has occurred only one time. Now uh, let's say we get another uh, example where we, uh, uh, we are asked for a frequency of Charlie. So what we are going to do is that we are going to check h1 at 0 which gives us 1 and then we are going to check uh, h2 at 3 which gives us 2 which is 1. Now if we see clearly that Charlie has not occurred even once in our data stream but our data structure says that Charlie has occurred once that is the frequency of Charlie is 1 which is wrong. So from here we can see that sometimes it might happen that uh, uh, count min sketch would wrongly predict the frequency of, of a particular item that is it will give a higher amount as frequency than what that uh, item has actually occurred in the in the data stream. So this is the prob this is what the probabilistic data, uh, nature of uh, count min sketch is all about. That is sometimes it can give you a wrong answer. Sometimes it can it can approximate a little higher than what the actual frequency of the item is. So the frequency given by the CMS or the count min sketch is an upper bound of the actual frequency of the item in the stream. That is whatever frequency that that the count min sketch data structure will give you would always be either the same or a little more than uh, whatever is the actual frequency of that item in the stream. So in order to bound the amount of error that count min sketch does in approximation of the frequency we can tune the values of the number of columns and number of rows uh, to come up with the required amount of feasible amount of error in the approximation. 
so we can use these formulas for uh, getting the correct values of w and d so i'm not going into the details of how these formulas come up or how they are derived uh, please look into the links shown in the description for uh, getting the correct derivations for these so uh, we saw earlier that the frequency table that we created using a hash map basically had a, a constant time complexity but it had a linear space complexity but in case of a count minute sketch both time and space complexities are constant because uh, the d and w are kind of predefined we do not they are not dependent upon the number of items that we are getting so hence we have a constant space complexity also in case of count minute sketch but that is coming at a cost of some amount of error in approximation so that brings us to our last section which is the applications so there are multiple applications for uh, count minute sketch database so it is used for database query planning so in database query planning there are places where we need to do the estimates of the size of the tables uh, which are obtained in the sub query so for that uh, you know count minute sketch comes and becomes handy uh, for finding heavy hitters so we might have uh, face problems like you know uh, on a website there are multiple pages and there are a lot of hits coming on those uh, websites so you know we can uh, we can maintain count min sketch to uh, to to get what are the pages where where most of the traffic is coming on uh, then uh, like any problem wherein we are getting a huge list of items for which we want to maintain the frequency or you know at runtime we want to tell what is the amount of time the 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 item has occurred in a particular list you know account mini sketch comes into pretty much handy so uh, yeah that's all we have for today so thanks for watching this video please do not forget to subscribe the channel uh, thanks for watching thanks a lot bye bye